Hey Kev, said the Twitch chat, wouldn't it be fun if you set an incentive, nay, a punishment, a forfeit, for if you hit 3,000 subscribers on Twitch? Kev replies, <laughs> yeah, no worries. We're obviously never gonna hit that. Do your worst, there's nothing you can do to me. So they said, well, interesting that you say that in a couple of weeks time there's a football match that you could go to it's Milton Keynes Dons versus Cambridge United so you know the team that all football fans hate the most versus the team that you Kev as a Peterborough United fan hate the most wouldn't it be funny if you went to that match wearing a Milton Keynes Dons shirt and vlogged the whole thing in a main channel video Kev replies yeah why not we're never gonna to get to 3,000 subs anyway. Not a problem. That's Stadium MK. I'm here for Milton Keynes Dons versus Cambridge United, the team with the worst home record in League One versus the team with the worst away record in League One. Two teams I have a very, very strong disliking for. Welcome to Milton Keynes. It's not just me. In order to make sure that I actually fulfil my side of the forfeit, editor Chris is here. Hello. Making oh, his mate. main channel debut. How very exciting. It's actually the first time we've met. It is, yes. We've, uh, we've been working together for like a year and a half, and this is the first time we've met when he got in my car at the train station this morning. But I have a gift for him, or should I say, I have a number of gifts, because as you'll know, just a couple of weeks ago, I went to Spurs. He's a Spurs fan, so a few gifts for you. Editor Chris, firstly, I thought you'd just no, like no, not the back. No, we're not. We're not looking at the back of it. It's I fine. I thought you'd just appreciate it's the, Spurs the lovely shirt. Spurs shirt. Thank yeah, you very can we much. Just have a quick no. look at the back, just for the benefit of the viewers. I think they'd quite like to see what's. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's the Sol Campbell Spurs shirt. That's that's from me to you. You can have that. Yep. Thank you. Um, these are also the bits that I got you from the club shop. So in there. Yes. Um, continuing My. the theme. We've got you some Tottenham Hotspur yellow underpants. Yes, thank you very much for those. Which I'll be wearing those this evening. Thank I you. I hope so. Uh, yes. are coming on Twitter, no doubt. Um, <laughs> and of course, mm. an Antonio Conte bobblehead, your favourite current Tottenham manager. The only current Tottenham manager. But still, your favourite current Tottenham manager. You are welcome. Let's go. Put your shirt on. No. And let's, let's go and do a football match. Why do you match. put yours on? <laughs> <laughs> put your one on, go on. Yeah, I suppose I need to put the shirt on, don't I? Well, it's on. There it is, look. This is probably terrible for the audio because I'm moving the microphone around to show you it. I don't get why I have to wear this, but he doesn't have to wear the Spurs shirt. <sighs> Let's go and do a football. Well, it is rare we have to go voiceover style in these uh, in these match day vlogs, but we're about to go to the club shop and they were playing so much really loud copyright music in there and there were so few people in the shop making any other kind of noise. We've been left with no choice. So this is me having a wander around the club shop. There's your proof. Those of you who were on Twitter telling me that I dragged my shirt through the mud, all of the shirts have this really dirty looks like they've not been washed effect on them. the home shirt is like the away shirt third choice shirt 50 percent off the third choice shirt there for you which is like the reverse pattern of the home one that is a goalkeeper's shirt we eventually established and then they have all the little kiddie sizes if you want to inflict um mk don's stickers or things like that on your family you can and then we go into this section which actually isn't too bad because this is just the sportswear section where none of it is actually MK Don's branded. So if I was going to buy anything in here, it would probably be from this section. But as I'm about to discover, they're all skinny boy sizes. I think the biggest they went up to was a large and a large hoodie from a company that, bearing in mind, I had to get a 4XL size in the replica shirt because we know this brand comes up small anyway. 
uh, yeah, I had no hope of buying anything in this shop at all. I had a little rummage through here to have a look to see what they had in the way of tapped. We've got some pens, some books, some balls, and then some water bottles around this size as well. But I mean, ultimately, not a huge amount of selection. No scarves, which surprised me a little bit. I was desperate for a uh, Cambridge half and half scarf. I think that is me telling you exactly that. Well, we've stumbled into the fan zone, which I think it is worth pointing out that today is a fan day. So I don't think they do this all the time. They've got like an arena. This is the Marshall Arena, which is next to the ground. And um, it's just, it's set up for shenanigans. We're indoors on a very cold day. There's a giant dartboard for people to run at. There's somebody dressed as a peanut over there. Um, there's a little football match going on over here. There's just general shenanigans afoot. We've got a whole section on wheelie bins for Milton Keynes 2023, which I'm very excited and passionate about. They're giving away brioche. I've never been to a football match before where they've been giving away brioche. So unlike a lot of the other matchday vlogs I've done recently, I have actually been to Stadium MK before, and I remember the really weird thing about it. We've come in there at ground level, and you enter, and you're already halfway up because the pitch is down below, I, I'm gonna describe it as below sea level. I don't know how high up in the mountains Milton Keynes is, but you're literally in between the lower and the upper tier uh, when, you, uh, when you come in where we've just come in. Interestingly as well, I think, the last time I came about 10 years ago, I don't think they had any seats in the upper tier, so they've filled the upper tier in a little bit. It looks like that's been done all the way around the ground. So it's actually finished this time, which it wasn't when I was here before. But there you go. There we have the pitch. We're sitting somewhere in this corner, I think. Because it's the family fun day, tickets are only £12. It's half normal price, I think. So um, I just got the cheapest ticket in the part of the ground that I figured was furthest away from any hardcore fans of MK Dons, if that's a thing that exists. Um, but I think they're probably, I think over there is where the family area is. And I think behind that goal is where the, uh, the Milton Keynes fans are. As you can see, it's empty. Um, and here, I think, is where the Cambridge fans will be. Cambridge are over there. Cambridge are over there, Riley. So if I've, got the ground, I've got the ground backwards. Cambridge are over here and Milton Keynes are over here. So when I came years ago with Posh, I was over there, right down, almost at pitch level, and it was awesome. So it might be that we're actually in that corner now, because what I tried to do when I was looking at the, at the website was get us tickets that were probably closer to the Cambridge fans than the Milton Keynes fans, because although I dislike both, I'm probably closer to Cambridge than, than the other ones. That's my theory, and I'm saying that as a Peterborough fan. Here we have the, uh, the food situation. As per the last couple of matchday vlogs, I can't actually have a greasy cheeseburger or a pie or anything like that. The gallstone's still very real. Uh, so we went to Marks and Spencer's and I had a Marks and Spencer's meal deal that included apple and peanut butter to dip the apple in. That's the advantage of the ground being in a retail park. Well, I don't think I've seen this at a football ground before. There's an actual Papa John's inside the ground with delivery trolleys. Our seats are just down here, so I was right. I just got myself turned around in the ground. The Cambridge fans are here. We're gonna be right down here next to the Cambridge fans towards the back. So I can't imagine there's gonna be a lot of Milton Keynes fans nearby, but we are gonna be smelling pizza the whole time. And I have to make sure I don't eat any. If you let me eat pizza, Anna will kill you. Well, so much for my dastardly plan. As you can see, block one is blocked off and they've got netting over the seats that we will be sitting on because it's so close to the away fans. We've just spoken to a steward. Our seat is basically under the netting and uh, we can't sit on it. So he's basically said, there'll be plenty of spare seats, just go find one. So I am guess we're gonna, yeah, these are all netted off here. So he said ours were under the net, so I'm guessing the seat that I got last night off of their website is one of these here under the netting. So we'll just find somewhere else to sit roughly nearby. 
<laughs> oh my word. I mean, the threat of all these uh, Cambridge fans. I love the fact as well that editor Chris is wearing an orange to a football hoodie and stood next to the blocked off thing and people are coming up to him thinking he's a steward and asking where they have to go. Hey, guy, guy in bright, yeah, guy in high vis, don't stand next to the thing if you don't want people to think you're a steward. That's amazing. Chris works here now. I tell you what, I might be in the process of converting, comparing this to Barcelona. Um, I've got lovely amounts of leg room. I've got the seats are wide enough to accommodate an ample pair of buttocks. They're even padded. They've got padded seats. This is, of all the match day vlogs I've done this season, this is the most comfortable seat I've sat in with the most leg room, the best view of the pitch. Admittedly, it's not my seat. My seat is somewhere under these nets, so we might be asked to move, but right now, this is, this is all right. It's just a shame about where it is. Chris is now going to put the team news over his own face. But the most shocking thing for me is that Dean Lewington still plays for Milton Keynes. He was an old man the last time I was here, 10 years ago. He must be in his 50s by now. We joked about him on stream, assuming he'd be hovering around in the hospitality areas or something. But no, he's still playing left back for them. What is going on? We've only been in these seats about two minutes. The match doesn't kick off for another half an hour, and I'm already this close to just going three yards that way and buying a pizza. Oh! The weird thing as well, when we were outside, I took a shot of the, there's a Papa John's, I guess it's the same restaurant, it's the other side of the building, and panned over slightly, and there's a massive Domino's as well. There's a lot of pizza around these parts. I ventured to the, uh, to the food place, coffee, but apparently it's black, and I got Chris a, a fork to stare his with. You need it, you know? Because didn't trust the spoons around here. It's nearly time to kick off. I don't know why, but there are a load of kids waving flags around just before kickoff. And there they all are. I am flabbergasted at how few MK Dons fans there are behind that goal. I think I've inadvertently put us in the busiest part of the stadium, which is the opposite of what I was trying to do. I thought there'd be a little bit of safety near the Cambridge lot at that end. Because even though, even though I am a posh fan, I think there'd be some real football fans' mutual respect. for both of these to lose I am gonna, I'm actively trying to work out how that can happen because I know there'll be people who doubt that I actually did it there is the uh, the shirt it is on look and I realise I'm mushing the microphone around and it probably sounds terrible but the shirt is on I did come here and wear the shirt it's just a passionate fan that's what you want passionate MK Don I'm also hiring a new editor if you just let me know down in the comments if you're interested in applying. My previous one was scum and I had to get rid of him. Well in the referee, we've just had our first controversial moment. MK got through on goal and there was a, a pretty good challenge from the Cambridge defender. From here, it didn't look like it went out for a corner. The referee though, knowing he's the star of the show today, has given a corner. It is now a corner to MK Dons right down in front of us. The Cambridge fans behind where it's happening are very upset about the whole affair. Cross comes in and it's dealt with comfortably. Excellent little bit of uh, showmanship from the ref though. Absolutely on board with that. Corner comes in and... 
goal mouth chaos. That was probably the closest either team have got so far. We're about halfway through the first half. It is as uneventful and boring as I was expecting. More good work from the ref. Absolutely nailed on penalty and he just completely ignored it because he knows how keen I am for a nil-nil today. Good work up the referee. It's getting on for half an hour into the first half. it out from the back, got the guy through on goal, it exploded over there, they've even let off a flare for a disallowed goal, which is oh, so Cambridge, and it's, it's been disallowed presumably for offside, I don't even know what for, but yeah, perfect flare usage right there. It's sort of quietened down at least. Oh, and now I've got a little bit of balance back in, my, back in the world. Um, I just was quite impressed with an MK Don's goal and I felt guilty, I felt bad. But now I've just seen Dean Lewington get punched in the face and I feel happy again. Mo Isa's trying to put on a show for me here and make the point that maybe he should have been given more of a chance at Posh. He's just attempted an overhead kick that's gone narrowly wide. The man is having an interesting afternoon. I guess things could be worse. I could be at the posh game this afternoon. I've just had a look on Twitter. We're 2-0 down against Cheltenham at home. And I've just made a double substitution after 25 minutes, which suggests things aren't going very well at London Road today. MK are about to score again here, I think. Maybe not. They were... The Cambridge fans finally have something to cheer about. That was Milton Keynes being given offside. That's where their bar is currently. There's a half-time mascots race. One of them's a brioche. Come on, the brioche. Well, that was a cheat. That is a cheat right there, disqualified. Go on, the brioche. Time, by the way, that was that was halftime entertainment. Oh, can I go home yet? There we go. Then second half o'clock. More of the same, I suppose. I don't even. I, it's so weird being at a football match, wanting both teams to lose. I don't even know what a good second half would be. A couple of red cards would be nice, I think. Fingers crossed. Come on, linesman! Up the referee. Here we go. Look at him. Watch him whistle. Come on, ref. You know what to do. Here he goes. Checking his watch. And... Oh, what a whistle. Dean Lewington's being substituted, which does spoil the afternoon to some extent it means I don't get to see him get sent off 25 minutes to go nothing at all is happening in this second half other than the fact that we are just getting colder and colder it is it is chilly and I'm uh, I'm using my time constructively looking at their TGI Friday salad menu to try and see if I can get a healthy meal at TGI Fridays which is in the car park the Cambridge fans seem to have a real love affair with a lot of their players every time they make a substitution it's just a chorus of boos from the Cambridge fans they are uh, uh, they are not having a very nice afternoon, it seems, which does improve my afternoon somewhat. I cannot emphasise how little has happened in this second half. 
It's, this isn't just me being a negative Nelly because I don't care for either team. It is just such a nothing second half. I said in the intro that it's the team with the worst home record versus the team with the worst away record. And I think I could have figured that out for myself at this point if I hadn't already been told. My word. I know this is a fan day. They've just announced the attendance at over 11,000. Indulge me for a moment. Where are they? I can only assume they're counting everybody in the retail park next door as well. <laughs> they're singing If You Hate Borough Stand Up, which I assume is a dig at the mighty Peterbury United. I'd like, it on re I'd like it on record that only about 10% of them bothered to stand up. Pathetic. <laughs> Glad you're losing. Five minutes of added time might be the biggest travesty in football history. Nothing, do you literally nothing has happened in this second half. And they're making us sit through five more minutes of it. Horrified. Well, that was that. One of the most boring football matches I've ever been to. Literally nothing happened, but I survived it. And the important thing is now it's over. I've been able to remove this. So we're done with that and I'm going to go home. It's raining now as well. This is rubbish. Thanks for watching, folks. I need to go and find somewhere to get dry. Um, subscribe to the channel. Make sure to subscribe to Lelujo too as well so this man can feed his children. Next match day vlog is going to be from Switzerland in a couple of weeks. But for now, thank you for watching. Toodle pip. Goodbye.